Hey YouTubers, how you doing? Today I'm going to do a small video to show you how to rewind the armature motors in Lionel Pullmore motors. Uh, this armature is from a T1 Reading locomotive and when Lionel wound this up at their factory, uh, the magnetic wire was partially wrapped around one of the segments and it was creating a short. And that short caused performance issues with the locomotive, which only ran at half the speed. So, uh, we're going to rewind all three segments of this armature. Now, the reason why I'm doing all three segments is because that uh, in case if the other two segments are damaged uh, at the factory and I didn't know about it, I'd rather take care of those issues now rather than have to take apart the locomotive again to get to this armature and rewind these segments. I mean, who knows? I mean, there could have been other damaged uh, wire in these segments and I don't know about it. So whatever it is, let, let's all fix it now. So we're going to use a digital multimeter, a wire gauge identifier, a ruler, some simple math, to rewind this and perform like new again. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to want to look at is to see how this motor is wound. We can see that there's two wires twisted together and then soldered onto the commutator plate, wrapped around the segment, and then the wire from this segment is twisted with this wire from the other segment and then soldered onto the other commutator plate. Now this goes the same all the way around for this motor, and I believe that this is a delta configuration. Uh, another configuration is you have one wire soldered onto to the commutator plate while the other ends of the three segments are soldered together and tucked underneath the commutator plate and I think that's called a Y configuration but we're not here to talk about that so um, we're just showing you just how different ways that these armatures are you know um, terminated here onto the commutator plate so we want to get a resistance reading of these coils um, just to see what we get as a resistance reading and the target resistance reading that we want to have at the end when we rewind these motors. So with our multimeter on, make sure we get continuity. Okay. We can take the motor and we're just going to measure on the commutator plate. All we're doing is we're just getting a baseline reading, 1.6 ohms, 1.6 and finally, yeah, 1.7. All right, those measurements are fine. So those are the target readings I'm hoping to see once we rewind this motor. Now, if you do have a problem on one of these segments, um, just ignore that one commutator plate that it is tied to and just take a reading on the other two segments as your baseline reading. So now that we have that, let's see how much wire we are going to need to rewind this motor. With a ruler, you're going to want to measure from the highest points of the coils on your armature. And from top coil to the top underneath the armature to the bottom is about one inch. And we're going to double that measurement, so it's going to be one inch up and one inch down, so it's going to be two inches. And then across, we're going to, well, the coil is actually in the segment itself, so I'm kind of eyeing this up. And I want to say that's five-eighths of an inch and 5 eighths this way and 5 eighths this way is inch and a quarter. So we have two plus inch and a quarter is three and a quarter inches, which makes one full outside wrap of the segments here on this motor. Cut the twisted wire going to the commutator plate and move it aside. Using needle nose and a soldering iron, remove the remaining twisted wire on the commutator plate and as much solder as you can. I found the gear puller works best on removing the commutator plate off the armature shaft. Start removing the magnetic wire from the armature and count each wrap as you do. Note the rotation as you are unwinding as rewinding the motor will be in the opposite direction. Pass the wire through the segments in the wire gauge to find the correct size. Since this wire is enamel coated, it will have resistance going into its correct wire size, which is 29 gauge. Strip off the enamel on the wire for better results. So we have an average resistance reading on the segments of about 1.7 ohms. And with our wire heights on our segment uh, at 1 inch and 5 eighths of an inch, if we double these, we get 3 and a quarter inches of wire per wrap per segment on the armature. Now we have to get a total wire length for all of this to rewind our armature. The armature was unwrapped in a clockwise position and it's going to be rewound in a counterclockwise position. So each segment with its own wire has its own number of wraps. So the green wire here in the one segment was 128 wraps. 
the one red segment had 127 reps and the other red segment had 130 reps. So how much feet are we going to need per segment to rewind this all together? Well, since the, that these numbers are off, it's not going to make a big difference. But I figure if we go with 128 reps per segment, I think that we are going to be just fine. So if we take 128 turns and we times that by 3 and a quarter inches, we get 416 inches of wire per segment. And if we break that down and we divide that by 12 inches per foot, we get 34.67 feet or approximately 35 feet of wire per segment. So 35 feet is a lot of wire to wrap around one segment on this armature. But we're not going to use all 35 feet because, well, it'll be too much wire to wrap around on this and we're not going to have the uh, measurements to operate the locomotive properly. Is it going to be 30 feet, 27 feet? I mean, I really can't tell you because if I say those measurements, I could wind up being too short and then I'm going to have to wrap it over again. So we're going to stick with 35 feet with this and whatever access we have, just cut it off and just and then just chuck it away. The wire I'm using is Temco Industrials 29 gauge, 200 degree centigrade magnetic wire. And we're going to use that wire to wrap all three segments on this armature. Before I start rewinding the motor, I'm using a Vision Aid magnifier that I got from Amazon. It comes with an assortment of lenses up to three and a half times magnification. And you know, besides looking silly, this will help aid me in rewinding the armature. So I'm using a three and a half times magnifier and I can see that there is uh, grooves in the segment itself so that we can keep the wire closely tight within the segment. And this is important to keep the form because you don't want to have a loose armature windings or coils that may go off um, back and forth on itself because that'll give an irregular shape and it may affect the magnetic field. So I think this is going to be a tool that's going to be useful in helping rewinding motors and looking at small details in locomotives. I'm going to start by taking the magnetic wire and wrapping it around my armature shaft just to give it a little uh, anchoring point. And then I'm going to start taking the wire and slowly wrapping it around the segment. You can either rotate the, the armature around or wrap it any way that you like. Uh, if there's a tool for this, great. I would like to find out where there's one at. But uh, right now this is the method that I'm going to go by. So as you go around doing this, make sure that you count the wraps uh, as you're winding up your armature. So we fully rewound our segment with magnetic wire. Now after wrapping it with 128 turns, I took some electrical tape and I taped the end of the wire to the segment to make sure that it's not going to unwind or unwind as I wrap up the other two segments. Now how much wire did I cut off from this after winding this segment? 10 feet. Yeah, that's a lot of wire to cut off from this. So I took the excess wire and I wrapped it around a straw so I can save this for future projects maybe for a small LED project or getting wire into tight area. I mean, I mean, who knows? So this I'm not going to throw away. I'm going to keep to a side. Now I did say that earlier, uh, how much wire do I think I need for this? 30 feet or 27 feet? I mean, that's pretty, pretty darn close to what I was uh, working with here. So if this took 25 feet and I guess 27 feet, that is darn close. So I'm going to cut off uh, about 27 feet of wire for each segment and we're going to complete rewinding the armature. See if we could just start twisting these wires together so they don't come apart. Not too much though. I'm just taking a piece of scrap magnetic wire just to show you how to scrape off the enamel on the wire. Now I probably show you on the uh, armature, but it is it is a small work surface, so it might be kind of hard to see. So to get it off, what I'm doing is I'm taking the wire in between my thumb and the razor blade, and I'm going to move my hand forward while holding the wire steady, and we can see that enamel is just coming off on the razor blade. You can see that tan right there at the edge of the blade, and I don't know maybe the camera picks up, but you can see the copper is exposed. Uh, once you get the enamel off. Let's make sure we put that commutator plate back on the same way that we took it off. Now 
Now let's check the resistance readings of the new windings. Excellent. We are in the same resistance readings of the original windings before this armature was rewound. So everything looks great. Let's put it inside the locomotive, see how it runs. There's the visible rewound armature just to show that I didn't put another one in there. So we'll set it right on the track. This is so we have another successfully rewound armature for another locomotive. And that locomotive is my T1484 steam locomotive, which is a rebuild project that I am currently working on right now. And I hope I could put it online soon. So it's got to work out a few things and, and get that video online. Now, if you're looking to rewire a Y configuration motor, everything in this video applies to the wire gauge and everything else. But the only difference is with that motor is that you're going to measure out three lengths of wire exactly the same, and you're going to solder the, the three ends together, which will, which will get tucked underneath the commutator plate, and only one wire is gonna get soldered onto the commutator plates itself. So it's not that much different. Uh, if you want an idea on how to visually see that, that motor get rewound, you can check out my Crescent Limited Rebuild video part one and go to the 19 minute and 23 second timestamp on the video and that will show you how the armature is rewound. If you're looking to rewire, rewind fields, horns, electrocouplers, reverse units, scout motors, or other engines, you can go to trainrefs.com and you can pick up this book. It's the first edition J.L. Cohen's Post-War Lionel Trains O-Gauge Reference Manual 1. And this is a great book to have if you are a, a do-it-yourselfer do that wants to rewind armatures, fields, and, and everything mentioned above. And it'll, it'll talk about troubleshooting and other items in here, but you know, I don't want to say too much about it, but you know, it, there is a lot of information in this that if you want to start fixing up trains yourself. So everybody, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you all next time. Take it easy.